Hi guys, welcome or welcome back to my YouTube channel Archituber. I'm Architect Webvi and I make content related to architecture and interiors. If you are new here, please take a moment and subscribe to my channel below. So in this video, we are going to be discussing about the quantitative aptitude. If you haven't watched the part one, please go give it a watch. And now let's begin with the part two of quantitative aptitude. So from point O, two person A and B started their journey on X Y plane. A went seven kilometers along. North and stopped. B went five kilometer west and then five kilometer south and stopped. What is the shortest distance between A and B? So now to find this, you should be knowing that we have to consider x y plane, okay, which has positives and negatives. So if we consider, uh, and they have given us the directions as well. So if we consider directions first, this is north, this is south, east. And west, and let's consider east as your x plane, which is all positive. Then y on the left hand side, which is negative. And when the arrow goes upwards, it is positive. Okay, and then here on negative side. So, and the center is O. Okay, as per the question. Now, A went seven kilometers to the north. I will take another color. So this is A. Okay, A traveled seven kilometers and stopped. Then B went five kilometers to the west. So this is B. B went five kilometers, which means minus five, and then five kilometers south. So again he went like that, means minus value, right? So. This is the equation. Now, what we have to find is what is the shortest distance between A and B. So we have to find this distance between A and B. So how we will find that using distance formula? So let us write the distance formula. So distance is equal to root in bracket of x2 minus xy square plus y2 minus y1 square and bracket complete okay now we have the values right uh, consider this as your x and again this as your y okay so now uh, we have got the values like a went from 0 to 7 okay so this is your uh, 7 is your y o is your x right then b we have minus 5 and minus 5 so uh, that is your x2 and this is your y2 okay we have this numbers with us so now put this numbers so if you put it like x2 is your minus 5 and minus 0 square plus minus 5 minus 7 square so what will you get so now if we have done this equation the final output will be something like this minus minus plus so this will be the outcome so we have this minus and minus will get cancelled and we have 5 square plus 12 square Okay, which is 25 plus 144 so that comes up to 169 so the root of 169 is 13 so 13 is the correct answer okay now let us discuss about the second question when a clock is seen through a mirror the hour arm and the minute arm at 9 and 4 respectively which means 9 is to 20 9 20 and what will be the time after 15 minutes so we have to find what is the actual time seen from the mirror if it is showing 9 20 plus 15 minutes so if we consider 9 20 plus 15 that comes up to 9 35 right so if we have to put it in mirror image how will you see uh, 9 35 that will be your actual time so Consider this your as your clock. This is 12, 6, 9, 
3 right so if now that it is showing you the actual time of 9:35 okay so what will be the mirror image of this so again i am putting here a clock 12 and 6 will be same but because of mirror 3 and 9 will change okay so if i put the same over here so that means this is 2 and this is 35 right so the correct answer is 2 is to 35 that means 235 is the correct answer now let us discuss about question number 3 four girls are sitting on a bench to be photographed Shika is to the left of Reena, Manju is to the right of Reena and Rita and Manju are there. Who would be the second from the left when the photograph is viewed? Okay, so now to answer this question, I am just making a line over here. Okay, so we have given, we have given here, so right, one given, second given and the third and we have to guess it. Who is the second from the left when the photograph is viewed okay so first is shikha is to the left of reena so uh, if we consider shikha here okay and shikha is left of reena if this is reena so this is left of reena and this is right of reena right so manju is to the right of reena so i think this is manju right and the next one that we have is Rita so this is Rita right so the if you see a picture now so who would be the second from the left when photographed is viewed from the left okay this is left this is right so the second would be Rina so the answer is Rina so now let us discuss about fourth question. If January 1, 1996 was Monday, what day of the week was 1 January 1997? So to calculate this, first you should know if the year is a leap year or it is not a leap year. And how do you calculate that? If we have given like January 1996 and January 1997, how will you calculate if the year is a leap year? Okay, so I have two techniques for that. If you have any year, consider 1996. If it is divided by 4 or it is fully divisible by 4, then it's a leap year. Okay, but 1997 cannot be divided by 4 fully, so it is not a leap year. But 1996 can be divided by 4. Okay, so this is one method and another method is now as we consider 2024. Okay, so 2024 is a leap year. So you can go back. So every four years you can check the leap year like 2024, then it will be 2020, right? Then 2026, 16, then 2012, 2008, 2004, 2000. And after that we come to 1996. This is one easy method for those who don't want to divide and anything so you can use this method and if we know uh, if it wasn't a leap year your day would start exactly after one day later in the next year okay so consider if it wasn't a leap year in 1996 and it was monday so it would have been tuesday on january 1 1997 okay if not a leap year but if it is a leap year we have extra one day so if it was a monday then in january 1997 on 1st of jan it will be wednesday as we have one extra day in leap year okay so the correct answer is wednesday so how many times the hands of a clock coincides in a day so for this you have to know the minute hand the hour hand and the second hand on the clock okay so for your reference so this is your hour hand this is the big one is your minute hand and the thin one is your second hand okay so if you know one might think the hands of clock coincides every 60 minutes like uh, this is going to 
coincide every 60 minutes but that is not true because considering uh, your clock it coincides every 65 minutes not every 60 minutes okay so if you consider that in 12 hours it coincides up to 11 times right and we have 24 hours in a day so if we have 11 times in 12 hours that means 22 is the correct answer for 24 hours because we have been asked in a day so in a day means 24 hours right for 24 hours it will coincide for 22 times and for you I have given this image over here which has all the timings okay a1 pm so if you see so these are 11 clocks okay of 12 hours so in total of uh, so for 24 hours it will coincide 22 times day hands of clock okay discussing about the next question if a is equal to x percent of y and b is equal to y percent of x then which of the following is true so we have these four equations where a is smaller than b a is greater than b third is relationship between a and b cannot be determined uh, fourth is x is smaller than y and a is greater than b and fifth is none of the above so what we have given in the question is if a is equal to x percent of y and b is equal to y percent of x right so if we consider a is equal to x percent of y right so this can be also written as percent means 100 percent right so we can write this as x upon 100 into y similarly this equation can be formed like b equals to y percent of x right so these two equations can be formed and we have to find out which of the statement is true right so if we see uh, if we make a linear equation out of this 100 a is equal to x y and 100 b equals to y x okay so if you this in linear equation what will happen 100 a equals to x y 100 b y x or x y you can write x y as well so if you see your x y and x y will get cancelled right then you will have 100 a equals to 100 b right so if we cancel 100 and 100 so what equation do we get a is equal to b right it is simple as that so is it a smaller than b it is not the answer a is greater than b no then relationship between a and b cannot be determined it can because it is equal then if x is smaller than y they both got cancelled and a is not greater than b a is equal to b so none of the above is the correct answer for this now let us discuss about two basic logarithmic questions so the first is if log of x to the base of 10 is equal to 3 then what is the value of x so you should be knowing simple logarithmic rules so by solving it by using logarithmic rule so writing here the logarithmic rule for this question so log of a to the power to the base b is equal to c which is equal to log of c to the base b is equal to a okay so it if that is a situation so we have log of 3 to the base 10 equal to x right so we have this equation now right so the answer is 3 times of 10 which is 1000 now again for the second question we have log of 5 plus log 8 minus log 3 so for such question you need to have this logarithmic rule which is log xy 
is equal to log of x plus log of y and for log x upon y we will have log x minus log y and if you look at this particular equation we have here plus so we'll first so, uh, solve that so log 5 plus log 8 which means this equation right log 5 into 8 so this x y means multiply okay so log 40 right and uh, we have again this equation so log 40 minus log 3 so now if we have log 40 minus log 3 that means we have this equation okay and this is your x and this is your y so it will become log 40 by 3 right so do we have this answer over here yes so c is the correct answer right and here in the seventh question d is the correct answer okay so that was it for the part two of quantitative aptitude and if you want more such videos please do let me know in the comment section below i'll see you in my next video till then please take care and subscribe to my channel below